Okay, so this is a project I've been thinking about doing for a while. It's where I take a random programming project and just kind of show you around Visual Studio C Sharp and show you the, the ways I do it and the ways I tackle the different problems that might come up. So the steps I've outlined are, the first step is taking the user input. So they say rock, paper, or scissors. The second is to generate a random number or a random choice for the computer. The third is to compare the choices made by the player in the computer. Fourth, declare a winner, and fifth, optimize afterwards. So just kind of clean it up and make it a bit more user friendly. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make a string for the input of the player and for the input of the computer, called input player and input CPU. Then we're going to make an integer called random int. This is for the random number that the computer will generate to choose between rock, paper, or scissors. But you'll see I will do that later. So this console.write is to tell or to ask the player essentially which they want to choose, rock, paper, or scissors. And the reason I make it a write is so that it doesn't skip on to the next line, it just kind of looks better. So I'm setting the input of the player equal to whatever they put, which is console.read line. It reads whatever and saves it to the, the string input player. Then I call random and say random called new is new random. It you don't have to learn what it means, it's just that RND is a random number essentially. So I say random int is equal to the next random number of that RND. Once again, not something you need to learn off. The only thing you need to know is the one and four means it's going to be a number between one and four essentially. So it's going to be, you know, one, two, and three. So then I create a switch statement for random int. So case one, case two. The case of one, it's going to be rock. Case of two, it's going to be paper. Case of three, it's going to be scissors. And the default, that uh, that's usually if someone inputs something, it can be wrong. But a computer is not going to do that, so we can leave that empty. But here's how this works. So the computer chooses a random number between zero and four. And if the number is one, the choice is rock. Two is paper, three is scissors. And there's a diagram at the bottom, which shows you how it's saved to input CPU. So the example is two, which makes it paper, and that, that does that. So if the case is one and the e input CPU is rock, computer chose rock. And uh, if the player chooses rock, they draw. And this is the way I've decided to do this. I've decided to just kind of put it all in the one thing. So if input player equals rock and input CPU equals rock, then it's a draw. So the way you test this is just by having an if statement inside the case. And another thing we had to do was see we added two more ints and set them equal to zero because we couldn't use those values to add score if they hadn't been what's called initialized first. So you can see score player plus plus has been added to the player winning and score CPU plus plus will be added to the computer winning. So what plus plus means is it adds one to the value that's already there. So if it's zero, it'll add one. If it's one, it'll add another one, making it two. And it's just a handy way of writing plus one. So I'm going to take that and put it into all the other cases for the for the CPU choosing a random between rock, paper, and scissors, a random number, and essentially make it so it calculates who's won and adds the, uh, the value to that. So here is a running, choose between rock, paper, and scissors. So we're going to say paper, computer chose rock, paper, or player wins. That's the end of the program, press any key to continue that closes it. What we need to do is loop it. So the game starts, and you play through the game, the game ends, and you're asked to play again. If you go no, it goes to quit. If you say yes, it goes back up to the start, and the game starts again. So this is called a loop, and we can do that using a while, a for, a while do, and for each. There's a whole heap, but we're going to be using a while loop. So we're going to write while. So how it works, while something is true, so while score player is less than three and the score of the computer is less than three so that means we're playing to three so that means this game will run until they're less than three so how this works it will run say a a adds one every time until it gets to ten then once you leave a you're in the red zone you're in b and it will add two till it gets to twenty then once you leave the red zone of B, you're into C, it adds 5 till it gets to 50. So you can nest them within each other so that when one's completed, it goes on to the next. And usually it happens a bit like this diagram, and that's just kind of my way of explaining it. But usually it happens in programs where you've got things nested in 
between each other and you can come out with a really really different answer so like you start off with one and you end up with 50 but it doesn't always happen in such a linear way and it always it doesn't always happen in a way that makes so much sense and it's just so 2d but it's it's relatively it's relatively simple so it goes from the yellow to the red to the blue and if the score of the player equals 3 by the time we get out of this loop then that means that the player has won because the loop has ended because either one has been three but if the score of the player is three then the player won else so if that's not true if the score of the computer is three then that means the computer won so this is just a way of displaying who won you probably would already know that from playing the game but it's just kind of an easy way of wrapping it all up we can put else there and that's just kind of if there's another way it can go but it's either going to be the player winning or the CPU winning, I just put it there out of habit. So after the game, we put a console.outline, so we ask the player, do you want to play again? And they can answer yes or no. So for yes or no, we're going to go back up and create a new variable that's a bool or boolean, which can either be true or false. And we're going to call it play again. And we're going to set it to true initially, because that's just the handiest way, and it also means that we can have the whole game inside a while loop. So there's another while inside a while. And this is a play again. So it's while play again equals true, it goes through the whole game essentially. So when play game or play again equals false, there's nothing else left to run and the program closes. So we put y or n here because those are the appropriate responses. And we make a new string called loop. And that's going to be storing the yes or the no. And if loop is equal to yes, then we keep play again, the boolean variable we created earlier, we keep that as true. I just had to check the name there. So we keep that as true. But if loop, if they type in n for loop, then play again will be set to false and the program will close because we will get to the end of the loop and it will come back up and it will ask is loop or is play again equal to true? No? Okay, well we have nothing else to run. Else we can put in invalid input, but I haven't done that just at the moment. Because if they don't put in Y or N, nothing really happens. So that's something you probably want to do. One thing I did here, I moved int score player equals zero and int score CPU equals zero into the start of the game, into the wild play again. Because then when you start a new game, the scores from the last game are reset to zero. Once you have that done, when we test the program, you can see it's uh, it's working pretty well. You can type in lowercase, you can type in uppercase because we have the two lower on the string. But it's just kind of random. For some reason I've won three times in a row. So yes, it goes back down to choose between rock, paper, and scissors. Which the computer chose the scissors draw. So it really, it's, it's working pretty well. I'm just going to rush through it here to show what happens if you don't win. I'm just going to choose paper every time. <laughs> and uh, CPU one, do you want to play again? No. AT to continue program closes. So it's pretty well rounded. We just have to clean a couple of things up. So what I'm gonna do is just add score uh, after it shows what who chose what and all that. So I'm going to print the player's score and what I'm gonna do I'm going to add curly brackets and a zero beside the player score. And what this is it's a placeholder for a variable. So you see I'll add CPU score and tab out and have one so essentially you number them zero one two three and then a comma and the zero equals an integer which we're going to place afterwards after the comma so we're going to have that as score player so you can imagine that player colon tab out a bit and then where that zero is you're going to have the score of the player and where the one is you're going to have the score of the cpu so it's a placeholder for strings and it's really really useful to get use it so at the end we're going to just add that uh, or yeah we're going to add the console.clear so what this will do at the end of or at the start of a new game it'll clear the screen and all you'll see is the new game and not the old game as you can see there I used the uppercase R and it still didn't matter so you can see at the top it shows what the current score is before you play the next game or before you play the next round or whatever it is so it shows CPU 3, CPU 1, do you want to play again? Yes. And it clears the screen so you can play the next game. So it's pretty much come together at this point. It's not a very difficult project, but it's it's pretty cool. I like it. It's just a, a fun way of messing about. So I hope you liked the video. I hope I explained everything well enough. And uh, I hope you watch the next one if I ever make it.